Welcome to the next lesson of coordinate geometry. Uh, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at how to graph inequalities. So far, our topic has been talking about linear equations. That's just with an y and an x and an equal sign. And we've been looking at many of the different things that we can do with that. In this lesson, however, that equal sign will not always be an equal sign. Sometimes you will be asked to actually graph an inequality. So that may be graph where x is always less than 2, graph where y is always bigger than negative 3. As you can see in the examples here, there's a couple of different things. Mostly this lesson is going to be using many of the skills we've already learnt with linear equations. We're going to add one step on the bottom of that and just say shade in either to the left or right of the line you've just drawn to represent the actual inequality and not just an equal sign. Let's have a look at the different ones that you'll be asked to work with. So you might be able to draw a region bounded by an x value or a single y value. The last one, how y was equal to 2x minus 1, is an example of trying to graph a region bounded by a linear equation. And finally, the last one, which being the most difficult, is where you'll be asked to draw and shade a region bounded by multiple examples of the three above. To help us do that, we need some hints and tips some things you will need to know. Now we're not going to have equal signs anymore. What we're going to have is either greater than or less than or symbols that represent greater than or equals to or less than or equals to. So when you have only a greater than or a less than, your graph you draw with a dashed line to show that the line itself is not included in the shaded region. However, when you have a greater than or equals to or a less than or equals to, you use a solid line to show that the graph that you've just drawn is included in the region you've shaded. Now an important tip that many people forget is we're going to need to rearrange these equations so we're going to need to divide or multiply across our inequality and when you divide or multiply across an inequality sign by a negative number you need to switch the direction of the negative sign. So let's say we have negative x equals 1. If we wanted to just get it x equals, we would multiply by negative 1. That would mean x would equal negative 1. That's a simple transposing. If we had negative x was greater than 1 and we wanted to multiply our negative 1 across there, we would have to switch the sign and say x is less than negative 1. And that's just a simple hint and shortcut way of actually just representing pure truth. Uh, my next tip is to draw the line like we've always been doing when we've been asked to draw an equation and then we'll figure out where to shade after that. When we're talking about these regions bounded by certain areas all we're really saying is do what you would normally do with linear equations and tack on a step at the end of shading either above or below the line. Another hint to remember when you're asked to graph regions or areas bounded by inequalities. Scale and detail are not that important as much as your intercepts and where you shade. So showing that the line has a positive gradient, showing where the line is, where it cut the y-axis, and knowing which area to shade are most important rather than have you actually got the line steep enough to represent what you're trying to draw. Are all your points on your line exactly in the place they should be? We're not really interested in those last things. We just want general form and correct side of the graph shaded. Finally, when you're asked to graph and shade in regions bounded by more than one inequality, uh, there is a difference between the words or and the words and. If your region is bounded by x equals 1 or y equals 2, then you treat them separately and you do each line like you would normally do the one and shade both areas. However, if there's an and involved, so it's bounded by some inequality and another one, then you need to work out the intersecting area that that covers and only shade the intersecting area. That may make a bit more sense when we jump into the examples, but it's a good idea to have a list of this stuff at the start of the topic. So heading into our examples. Graph the following regions represented by the following inequalities. X is less than 5. So our step said we treat it like an equal sign and we say X equals 5. 
So x equals 5 is about here. And I'm going to draw a line that says x equals 5. So that line there is x equals 5. Then my inequality says x is less than 5. So I need to make this a dashed line because I don't need to include the line. Then I need to shade the appropriate region. Now x is less than 5. On the right of my line, x is bigger than 5. On the left of my line, x is smaller than my 5. So over here is the region that I'm going to shade. And that's pretty much all we have to do with these questions. Moving on again, y is greater than or equal to negative 1. So we treat it like an equal sign. y is equal to negative 1. I'm going to go to negative 1 and draw my line that represents that. I can leave it a solid line because my symbol says it was greater than or equals to. So it stays a solid line. Then I have to pick, do I shade the top or the bottom? My equation says that the region I'm talking about has y values bigger than negative 1. So I'm shading above my line. Okay, moving into that and or thing I was talking about. Here we have two inequalities that we need to graph and they're separated by an AND. So we need to be very careful about where we shade. We'll jump into that uh, once we've got our lines. So we're going to treat these like equal signs, and we're going to have x equals 2 and y equals 7. I'm going to go here to x equals 2. I'm going to draw my line. I'm OK in drawing a solid line because it's x is greater than or equals to 2. Uh, y is equal to 7. I'm going up here, but I'm going to make it a dashed line because it was not a less than or equals to. It was only a less than. Now, with an AND, I need to shade the region where it fits both inequalities. So what I'm going to do is use a separate colour for now, just to lightly shade the two areas that they apply to, and then we're going to properly shade the one section that applies to both inequalities. So I have the value that x is greater than or equal to 2. So over here, are all the places where x is greater than or equal to 2 and I need the equation where y is less than 7 so I'm talking about below my line then the actual region because this is separated by an AND it means we only need to shade the area on our graph that fits both equations is where my double green lines happened and that is just on the right of my graph but below my x line so here so only that area needs to be shaded even though I have green lines in certain other regions on my graph this is an AND question therefore I only should shade the areas that apply to both inequalities okay moving on getting a little more difficult here I have y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 3 so I'm going to treat it like an equal sign. It's in gradient intercept form. So we've had plenty of practice at graphing those. We put a point at where the y-intercept is of 3. And then I use my gradient of 2 or 2 over 1 to find my next point. So I'm going to go up 2 and across 1 for my next point And rule my line in there. Now, I'm safe in drawing a solid line because my inequality is a or equals to as well, so it is including my line. Then I need to shade the area where y is greater than my values. So y is greater than my values on the top or above my line. So there is my shaded region. Moving on to a slightly harder one, and one where we have to actually rearrange our equation. That's why we've got a bit more room here. Um, we have 2x is less than 4y minus 8. So I need y on its own because we're going to treat them like equal signs. The easiest way to graph these is in gradient intercept form. So I need y by itself, which means I'm going to need to get rid of that 8 by adding it across. Remember our rule was only when we multiply or divide by a negative number across an inequality, it changes direction. Because we just added an 8, it doesn't change direction. Now we need to get rid of the 4 and divide that across. So 2x divide 4 is going to be x on 2 plus 8 divide 4 which is 2 and it is still a less than sign even though I did divide it wasn't by a negative number. 
so it doesn't change direction. Now I'm going to treat it like an equal sign and say y is equal to x on 2 plus 2. I'm going to put a point at the y-intercept and I'm going to use my gradient. Now remember that there is a 1 in front of that x, so my gradient is a half. So I'm going to go up 1 and across 2, put a line there, and rule a straight line for my graph. Now what I'm going to have to do, because my original inequality sign was only a less than, I'm going to need to turn my line into a dashed line, because it shouldn't include the line. Then my equation said y was greater than these values, or my value was less than the value of y. Because y should be bigger, I need to shade all the values of y that are bigger than my line, which are all the values on the top. So there is my shaded region. Moving on to the next one, we have 2x minus y is less than or equals to 7. I need to rearrange this to make this y on one side and everything else on the other. Because y is negative, I'm going to move it across by adding it. So I'm going to be left with 2x is less than or equals to 7 plus y. Then I'm going to move my 7 back by taking it away. So I have 2x minus 7 is less than or equals to y. Pretend it's an equal sign, so y equals 2x minus 7. Graphing it. I need to put a point on my y-intercept of negative 7, so that's all the way down there. Use my gradient of 2, which is 2 over 1, so I need to go up 2 and across 1. Plot a few points just so I can make sure I get this as a straight line. And plot my actual line. Now, because the original equation had a less than or equals to. I need a solid line because my line is included in the region that I'm going to shade. Uh, my y is on the greater end of my inequality, so I need to shade all the values that y is greater than my line, which are all those. Okay, one last example. It's another and example, so I only need to shade the regions that apply to both my equations. Okay, let's pretend that we've got some equal signs here. I've got y equals 3 minus x on 3, and I've got y equals an x plus 3. So, graphing the second one looks to be the easiest. I have a y-intercept of 3, so I put a point there and a gradient. Remember, if there's no value before the x, there is a 1 there. If it was 0, the x wouldn't even be there. So my gradient is up 1 and across 1, so it goes there. And that's my line. Before I do my line, I'm going to have a look at the original inequality sign. Because it was a greater than, I need dashed lines. So I'm going to do my dashed lines there. I'm going to pick another color just to lightly shade the region that applies to this one. It says y is greater than my line, so it includes all values where y is greater than my line. Looking at this other one, a little more tricky to graph. Basically, the number on its own is a 3. It's a positive 3. So our y-intercept is at 3 again. However, our gradient is negative a third. So that means we're going to go down 1 and across 3 for our next point. Down 1 and across 3. Looking at the original inequality sign, there was no equals to, so this one needs to be a dashed line as well. Send that up there. It was a y is less than my equation, so the values that I'm going to need to shade should be less than my actual line, so they're going to be underneath it. Then we have a look at the two areas, the two regions where the green lines have been double shaded. That's in the left of our graph, so that's the region we need to shade for to show this inequality. Once that is done, you have graphed the two regions shown in your inequalities. You have included the AND properly by only shading the one section of the graph where both regions and both inequalities actually exist. Once you've done that, you're finished. This lesson is now done. I hope I've increased your understanding of graphing inequalities by doing the following examples, and good luck.